Hey friend, it's Marissa and welcome to the Camera Brave Show, the podcast where entrepreneurs uncover the power of storytelling. I teach entrepreneurs just like you how to take video and build their confidence on camera. In this show, I give you my best tips for framing your mindset, crafting your camera presence, and connecting deeper through video. I'm so excited to watch you grow. Let's dive right in. Hello, friend, and welcome back to another episode of the Camera Brave Show. My name is Marissa. I am your camera confidence coach, teaching you how to take stunning videos and feel confident on camera. This is episode number 52, and in today's episode, I'm going to dive into three strategies for feeling confident when you're on camera. I haven't spoken on confidence recently inside of the podcast, so I'm going to break down these tips that you may have heard from me before. However, I'm going to refresh what may be your definition of confidence at the beginning of this episode. So even if you've heard me speak on this topic before, this is going to be from a fresh perspective, and it may be a very healthy reminder of what confidence actually is. And if you're thinking, I'm not a confident person, this isn't for me, then friend, this is absolutely for you. So before we dive on into this episode, I'm going to take just a quick moment to read a review from Nicole Catrick. So this is of the Camera Brave show written on Apple podcast. She calls this show a must listen. Not only does Marissa hold the knowledge and experience in all things telecommunication and media, but she has such a natural and captivating way in how she storytells to gain an excited and interested audience right off the bat, as well as being able to express her ideas in a way where we can all relate. And to top it off, that this is a learning community. You've got the perfect blend of inspiration and education. Oh, I appreciate this so much. Make no doubt that this is the podcast to listen from if you want to be inspired and grow as an individual and for your business. Nicole, thank you so, so much for this. I really appreciate your review. I love that this is not just helpful ideas, but that it's a learning community and that you are getting education out of these episodes. That is my absolute most intention is to encourage you and to educate you, whether it's about how to take video and equipment, how to feel confident, how to branch out into new territories of entrepreneurship. I'm so glad that you are loving this show and thank you for taking the time to write that very genuine review. Now, if you are wondering, what is a quick way that you can spend two minutes of your time to help the growth of the Camera Brave show and myself, it is to take just a quick minute and write us a review over on Apple Podcast. Very much appreciate the reviews and I love to share them with you guys. So if you would like to have yours read on the show, please go and drop a review. I would love to share it with everyone else. And I would love to know what you are personally loving about the show. Let's dig on in here three strategies for showing up confidently on camera. Before we dive into that, let's talk about confidence. Keep in mind, confidence is a result. Confidence is an outcome. A lot of society and culture today likes to sell us confidence. And it's almost like we have created this idea that in order to do something, we have to first be confident. And that is the opposite of what is true. The truth is that it is by doing something that you become confident in your abilities to do that action. One more time. You do not start with confidence and then do the action. It is through doing that action that you grow confident in your abilities to do something. Confidence is a result. What does that mean? It means that if you are waiting for confidence before starting, you have it backwards. You have to start something and then grow the belief in yourself that you know how to do the thing. How have I become confident on camera? I have become confident on camera because I started speaking on camera long before I felt confident. And every single time that I get up here and I speak like this with conviction and from a place of confidence, it grows my belief in myself that I am confident on camera. If you are waiting for confidence, you have it backwards. You do not wait for confidence. Here's what you can do. I'm going to outline three ways that you can speak confidently on camera, but I need you to know that if you feel insecure, if you do not feel confident in something, you do not need anything 
to actually change, to feel confident in that action. The way forward is through action. And it's in that action that you start to rebuild your identity and you start to believe that you are confident. One example that I gave recently, I'm reading the book, um, Atomic Habits, and they talk about in that book, with every action that you take, you reinforce the belief that you have about yourself. So the way to believe that you are confident is to continue to feed those actions of confidently speaking, confidently presenting, of feeling confident. And every single action that you take that continues to drive that belief is going to reshape the identity that you believe yourself to be. Because whether you believe you can or believe you cannot, you are correct. That's not me. That's Henry Ford. Just just so we're clear. So that's a little, I don't want to call it a rant, a reaffirmation on confidence because I feel very strongly about this. And I see a lot of people come to me because they want to feel confident. And the truth is that it is only through doing that you are going to grow confidence in yourself because confidence is the outcome. It's the belief in yourself. And we build beliefs over time. We don't build beliefs instantly. They're not, boom, that is my new truth. That's really not how it works. You have to have this repeated evidence. You have to have time. You have to incorporate it into your life. And then you get that strong belief. So What you can do are these three strategies to, I'm calling it summon confidence, because confidence is something that you can summon. It's something that you can create for yourself, no matter where you are starting from. As it relates to being on camera, let's dive on in to these three strategies after this quick break. Looking for a deeper way to connect with your audience? One way I stepped into sharing my message was through creating a podcast. When I started this show, I had zero experience with podcast hosting. So one thing that really helped me get started was how easy it was to host my podcast through Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout makes it easy to manage your podcast and puts all the analytics right at your fingertips. Buzzsprout gets your show listed in every major podcast platform like Apple Podcast, Spotify, and Google Podcast. So you're able to reach your audience wherever they're listening. Join over 100,000 podcasters already using Buzzsprout to get their message out to the world. Follow the link in the show notes to get started with Buzzsprout today. And make sure to use this link because you'll receive a $20 Amazon gift card if you sign up for a paid plan, which could literally go towards purchasing a microphone to record your show. Take the first step in creating your podcast by clicking the link below. Welcome back. Here are my three strategies for feeling, summoning confidence. It boils down to three things. Number one, preparation. Number two, body language. Number three, energy. I recently spoke on this at the seven figure CEO conference. You may be from, you may be here from that event. If you are welcome, I'm so glad that you're joining me and I'm going to dive into how all of these relates to confidence and how they can be the path that you get started because confidence will be the result of having taken this action. So these are three ways that you can take the action. The action in this particular instance is speaking on camera because that's what That's what you're here for. That's what I'm known for. So that's what's going to be the specific application, but know that you can take this and apply it to other areas of your life and feeling confidence in those areas as well. So step number one, preparation. It is scientifically proven that the key to feeling more confident and self-assured in yourself is to feel prepared. The more information that you can recognize that you are an expert in all of the evidence that you can compile that says, I know what I'm talking about. That is going to lead to you feeling confident when you feel prepared, when you feel educated, that is the key to having this conviction in your message. This is something I speak heavily on inside of my six week course, camera brave Academy is understanding your message. First of all, we've got to get crystal clear on what that message is. And then we have to know that we are an expert. 
You have to claim that for yourself to know that you know at least 10% above the average. That's what an expert is considered nowadays. If you have at least a 10% advantage on your audience, you are an expert. And every time that you believe that and that you claim that you are an expert and that you continue to grow your knowledge, your expertise, you continue to teach and share and allow people to grow, you are reinforcing that you are an expert preparation in every piece of content, everything, every networking opportunity, every single thing that you need to feel confident in starts with preparation. Before I launch a coaching call, I sit down and I prepare my content. Or if I'm speaking at a seminar, I sit down and I prepare my content. And I typically do it right before I'm about to go live or take the stage. Is it because I'm procrastinating? No. It's because I need it to be fresh. I need to know not two weeks ago was I an expert, but right now I am an expert. So preparing and pouring into your content. How do you do this? Just pen to paper, take notes and write it out. Purge all of the genius that is sitting inside of your head. Get it out on the paper and then understand and believe through those pages. You are the expert. This is the key to feeling confident. Step number one, preparation. I have an awesome content outline. If you're looking for content specific preparation, send me a DM on Instagram at camera brave, and I will send you this outline because it is absolutely the biggest key to feeling confident. Now, step number two, body language. And for the purposes of having three steps, because I do actually believe it's five steps to confidence, but to try to bulk it down to a three episode or a three step episode for you guys, I'm lumping body language and voice inflection in one here because they do go hand in hand. And once you master one, you can link the other to it. And then before you know it, you are grouping them together. Body language is the key to appearing confident. Preparation helps you feel it. Body language helps you look it. People consider me a confident person. They consider me someone who presents myself well. Is it because I woke up feeling confident? No, it is because I have mastered my body language to claim that space wherever I am. It doesn't matter if I'm on a stage or if I'm just networking around town or at the grocery store. I claim that space. I speak well and that makes people think you're confident. That's really all it takes, you guys. Think of someone who you consider to be confident. Take a moment. Think of someone. Do you have their name or their face in your head? Great. What is it about them? Why do they seem confident? Most likely, you identify them as confident because of the way that they speak, because they speak with certainty and assuredness, because they command the presence of whether it's on a camera or on a stage, because they are there with intentionality and they believe their message. Body language is such a huge component of this. Keeping your shoulders back, your feet firmly planted on the ground, that chin up and eye contact all the eye contact in the world. That is what builds trust. It's what helps us build relationships and it helps us feel confident. When someone is confident, they're not afraid to look you in the eye. They're not afraid. They want to be direct with you. So body language is so big. And in going with body language is your vocal inflection. Now, some of the amazing women that I have coached have been soft-spoken people. And I want you to understand confident does not mean loud. Just like energy does not mean talking fast. You can still be confident if you are softer spoken. Someone that comes to mind is Amy Porterfield. She is a marketing expert and her podcast is softer spoken. She has a calming, slow voice, but do not mistake that for a lack of confidence. Speaking confidently does not mean being loud or talking fast. It means speaking and knowing that every word that you have to say matters. Do I ever go off and speak mumbo jumbo that makes no sense? Yes. But do I still say it with the diction of a confident person? 
I do because it's all about the way that you are speaking. Now, we don't use these tactics and present garbage. That's why number one is preparation, not body language. Number one is having value in your content. So once you have your value locked in, all you have to do is set your body language and your vocal inflection on repeat and do not feel like you are too soft-spoken or too loud because that is not the truth. And that's going to segue us into number three, which has a lot to do with your vocal inflection, which is your energy. The number one step in setting your energy is knowing where you sit naturally. Are you naturally on the side of being more animated or are you naturally softer spoken? I am naturally a vibrant, loud personality. I come from the stage and theater and I do not have the problem of not having energy. I actually have to take my energy and harness it in and hone it in. Now, some of my clients that I have coached are soft-spoken and they worry that they need to be louder or more animated. And the truth is, if you are more soft-spoken, my tip to you is to not change your natural gifts. You are naturally gifted. The way that you speak naturally is where we're going to start. Can you improve and change along the way? Absolutely. But we're starting with you. We're starting with how you naturally are. If you are naturally softer spoken, that is beautiful and amazing. Use that. You do not need to look or sound like anyone else. Just because I'm animated doesn't mean you have to be animated. Sometimes I wish I was more softer spoken and I'll occasionally do episodes where I'm intentionally trying to be more soft spoken. But the reason energy matters is because this is the secret sauce, the authenticity. This is what keeps people coming back to you because they find you likable on some level. That's the honest to goodness truth. That's why people come back. Likeability. I mean... If you don't like it, that's okay. But the truth is, if you could not stand my messaging, if you could not stand the sound of my voice or my energy, you wouldn't be here. The truth is that if you did not like the person that you're watching, you're not going to continue to go back to their content. Know where you are at naturally when it comes to your energy. If you are softer spoken, I still want you to speak from a place of passion because as long as you can speak from passion and conviction in your message, it doesn't matter if you're speaking like this, because if you are speaking with intentionality and you just love what you are talking about and you could speak about it all day, then it's going to be just as interesting as if you're speaking at this level and you are trying to be big and because that's where you naturally are. So understanding where you naturally are with your energy and if you may want to take it down a notch or up a notch. Those are the three strategies for summoning confidence. What do you do now? Now, you're going to take those three strategies. You're going to pick a date and put it on your calendar. Maybe it's next Monday. Maybe it's Tuesday at 4 p.m. Maybe it's Thursday at 9 a.m. Put the date on your calendar that you are going to do some form of video. Pick whatever you like. We're going to start with what you like. Do you like going up on stories? Do you like doing a live? Do you like reels? You have to pick something. So if you don't like any of them, pick the one you hate the least. Maybe don't start with a live if that's not your thing. That's not my thing. Just going to be super honest with you guys. Lives are not necessarily my thing. I like stories. Stories are quicker. They're faster paced and they disappear in 24 hours. So put the date on your calendar. Decide what it's going to be. Then prepare what content you're going to speak on. As you speak on it, be aware of your body language. Be aware of your energy. Make sure that you're delivering with energy. We don't waste people's time here. So if we're going to talk about something, we're going to talk about something so good that you've got to hear it. That's where your energy comes from. And then do it again. And then do it again. Can you repeat it every single week at that date and time? Because what's going to happen is you're going to do that action. And then you're going to do that action again. Then you're going to do that action again, and you're going to do it again. And by that fourth or fifth time of you speaking confidently on a message you know is good, even if it is for 60 seconds, that's how long reels are. Don't come on here and tell me reels don't make a difference. No, you guys would not do that. You would not be here if you did not, if you really believed that Instagram reels were garbage or that TikTok wasn't going anywhere. Come on, you guys. 60 seconds is absolutely enough to convey a message. So speaking for 60 seconds again and again and again and again and again let's say five times 
you are going to be building that identity and that belief in yourself that you can speak confidently. And that growth right there is how you become confident. It's not a secret. It's not a hack. It's not something that you can just wave a wand and feel. And it is not something that you need to get started. Confidence is the result. It is the outcome. And you can build it for yourself. Everyone deserves to feel confident. All entrepreneurs have to know that their stuff is good. Why else would anyone buy it if it wasn't good? If your products, if your services, if your coaching wasn't the best, why would anyone buy it? You have to believe that it's good. And when you can speak about your things confidently through video, you are going to see your business explode in beautiful ways and see new opportunities coming to you. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, would you please do me the honor of sharing it with someone? Maybe it's someone who is newer to video or someone who you just saw their content and you're like, this is great. This is so for you. This is how I'm working to build my confidence, whether it's a neighbor, a sister, a friend, a mother, a brother. I would be honored if you would share this episode with them. Thank you so much for listening in with me today, friends. As always, you can find me over at Camera Brave on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week, friend, and I will see you next time on the Camera Brave Show. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Camera Brave Show. Make sure you subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to get notifications of new episodes every single week. I love bringing you practical confidence and mindset tips. If you love them too, one of the best ways to support this podcast is to leave us a review because it helps us grow the platform to bring you even more powerful stories. Plus, it makes me do a literal happy dance. I so appreciate you spending your time with me, friend. I'll see you next week. Week.